Hey, it's not like it was uh, Saad, how are you, brother? Hey, you know, uh, one of the other key questions that a lot of times, um, you know, you, uh, young, we go through, and a lot of times you see this online, Islamophobia, where people send this one link and saying, you know, in this small village, they had stoned this person to oh, that, yeah. or they whipped this person to that, mm. and maybe it was uh, due to honor, mm. or it could be zina, or it could be adultery, and they're like, they didn't get enough witnesses, but they're like, man, someone just saw it, and this is what they did. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people are like, man, is this our faith? Like, you know, uh, that these severe punishments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you look at throughout the history of our deen, I, I thought it'd be very important for our kids to kind of get a better understanding about where does Islam stand on, on punishments and hudud. Okay, cool. Bismillah. So, these punishments that you've mentioned, they can be qisas, they can be hudud, and just to very, very briefly uh, define both of them, you have those punishments which are going to be someone does something and you return that to them meaning for example someone is someone kills someone mm -hmm. and then they have to get that punishment or someone for example breaks someone's tooth and you have, then they can have their tooth broken in return mm -hmm. things like this in islam they are not to be done by regular people mm -hmm. you punch me in the face you break my tooth i can't i can't just go punch you in the face right. and this is the, here's the reason why in, fiqh, in books of fiqh, we see like if, if an eye is poked out or a tooth is poked out, if it's determined that that person is guilty, and this is sort of really important to understand. Through the, right, through yeah, the process. Yeah, so the process would include legal uh, officials, yes. medical officials, yes. because if it's legally proven that this individual did it, now a medical uh, uh, official has to determine to what extent. Yeah. So if I, for example, someone poked my eye out and I want to return the favor, for example, yeah. I can cause much more damage. Yes, yes, yes. And so the person who harmed me, I can forgive the person. Islamically, that's which there. Allah loves. Yes, which Allah definitely loves. I can also take due retribution mm -hmm. and have the government then remove his eye as he removed my eye. Mm -hmm. Now, someone might say, this is really, really severe. Well, first of all, punitive punishments in our religion, punishments that are sort of severe, mm -hmm. they have multiple purposes. Mm -hmm. One is to serve as a means for the person who was wronged mm -hmm. to get a type of revenge or feel at least that justice was done. Justice, yeah. Now imagine someone punches me in the eye and they, 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 my eye is knocked out completely and it can't be fixed. No matter how much jail time that guy serves, I will never have vision again. Mm -hmm. And there may, I may be upset about this, etc. So Islamically, I may not forgive that person's jail time. When my eye was knocked out and that person has the same to be done to him, I might not care about his jail time, but I will probably realize I'm really suffering over here. As much as I hate this person, I don't want the same to happen to that person. Because it's two different realities. Like, I'm not in jail right now, I'm not feeling that pain. But I do have my eye missing now, and I realize that guy's a jerk, what he did was wrong. But number one, I can get revenge. Or two, you know what, that's just a little too much, I just forgive you. It's more likely that a person who is feeling a type of pain that's very severe will recognize I don't want anyone else to go through it and forgive that person. Mm -hmm. Now the second thing then comes in, if I'm the aggressor, I want to hurt someone. If I know that my religion is going to hold me accountable that if I do this to someone that the same thing can be done to me, it's more likely to stop me, <clears throat> excuse me, from doing that act. Right. If I know I'm only getting a slap on the wrist, a small fine, yeah. I might carry it out. If I know I'm going to get an eye taken out for taking out that person's eye or a tooth, etc. Even, um, even if maybe I intended just to punch the person, but it resulted in an eye being yeah, lost, yeah. it's going to stop me. Right. Now my actions will be much more reserved mm -hmm. and restricted and civil as a result. Yeah, sure. Then we go, for example, to a situation where a person is killed. A person commits first degree murder, ma manslaughter, consciously kills that person, purposely kills that person. Islamically, Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, hayat, ya bab. that in this qisas, like that person killed someone from your family, there's life. People say, well, why is that the case? Well, let's look number one. If there's a murder, now today it's hard to understand, but before in history, murders were not as common. It's actually a sign of the day of judgment that murders will become rampant. If there's a murderer, people couldn't sleep well. They couldn't function well because they knew someone here is doing this. Someone's committing this crime. So kids will be less likely to play outside. Kids will be less likely to interact in public. Life was restricted. 
Now that person's caught and that person is executed for killing someone, everyone returns back to life. That's one definition or interpretation. Now the interpretation is what? Okay, you know what? In this, there's life. Why? The person who's, uh, who lost a loved one, a husband, a wife, etc., a, a daughter, a son, they may feel like you took my child's life. Now this person's there. They can never, that person's been ex ex uh, executed. They can never cause harm to anyone ever again. Right. That brings life back to the community. Number three, in Qisas, a person can say, look, you took my husband. He was providing for the family. Your death is not going to help me at all. But I need you to be able to provide for my family now. Mm -hmm. So now you brought life to that family that was going to financially struggle until whenever. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we begin with this conversation is to let people know that there's wisdom behind everything. Mm -hmm. There's wisdom behind even the process by which it takes place. So one pr what wisdom is to make people less likely to do that act. Uh, that act. Mm -hmm. Another wisdom in how it's carried out, it gives the opportunity for someone to forgive. And usually if something is more severe, people are more likely to forgive because they don't want someone else to go through that same right. pain. Another thing is that you can provide support for the person, for example, in this case of murder, uh, which would have if that person was just put in jail for life. Mm -hmm. That option's not there. Now this family is struggling. They can't work in jail and make money for this family. So they're able to say, look, you can be executed, but we forgive the execution in return for you providing for the family. Then we t and then in the actual process, there's a, there is a determination. Look, you cannot do more than what happened uh, to, to the criminal, cannot have more happen to that person. Now we look at other areas. People say like cutting off the hands. You can't just cut off a hand. You know, you're at my place and you steal a water bottle. Right. You can't just cut off your hand. Right. There's a certain minimum value, number one. Right. Number two, let's say I'm starving to death and I go to your home and I steal food. Mm -hmm. It can't just be that you, um, that you, that you kill me for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't just come in uh, and just have the, or, or cut off my hand for that. Rather, what happens is that an individual is uh, noted to be starving, i.e. the community did not do the responsibility to, uh, to take care of this person. So now they stole because of our mistake, they're not going to have their hand chopped off. Mm -hmm. And so there's, it's not just as simple as like, oh, the person stole a candy bar, bring them out, let's everyone gather, cut off their hands, like they do right. in movies and stuff. It doesn't yeah. happen that way. Right. And then it's a punitive measure. Yeah. Punitive measure, like how? So like, okay, I know my hands are gonna be cut off. I don't need that extra like bicycle or car or whatever the case may be, I just want it. Is it worth my hand? No, it's not worth my hand. Right. Whereas, if, is it worth for me to steal the car, stash it somewhere, they never find it, I'm in jail for six months, I get out, I have that car now, or whatever, it's sold on the black market, I get that money, or part of that money with my partners, yeah, it might be worth it. Um, and so, this is why the, the severity of punishments is as they are. You look at the situation, for example, people say of adultery. People say, adultery, how is this fair? Well, you know, I, I, I don't want to ever say a punishment of Allah is unfair. But just look at the way by which it has to be carried out. Four witnesses have to see it. Commit the act too. Yeah, so, so if an action is committed, yeah. and let's just say, I'm gonna be a little open, but try to be proper at the same time. Someone walks in on their spouse committing adultery and they're covered with a blanket. That is not witnessing the act. Because under the blanket, we don't know what's happening. And so it has to be very specific that it has to be witness witnessed. Mm -hmm. And the hadith is very clear about that. And so this is why in hadith, we don't find so-and-so was caught committing adultery, they're stoned or punished. Yes, we find so-and-so uh, had, had admitted to it four on times over, on their own, yeah. out of fear of punishment in the hereafter. Okay. They just wanted to be, repent in this world, and then they took the punishment nice. to be free of any punishment in the hereafter. Nice. We see that. We see that of Imrat al-Ghamidiyya, of Ma'iz al-Aslami and others, we see that. But I don't remember any time reading a hadith, and please correct me if I'm wrong, where they said, oh, we had four witnesses who actually witnessed the exact situation. And they went to go get and then we, stuff, yeah. Yes, that, that didn't happen. Didn't happen yeah. To the extent we had a hadith of a companion who came to the Prophet and oh, Messenger of Allah, he had some doubt about a situation at home. If I catch my wife committing this act, do I have to go get three other men to go and witness this and then, and then she'll be held accountable? He said, yes. He said, by Allah, I won't do that. That's so embarrassing. Like, that's not appropriate. Now, if a male does that, he just goes and says, I caught my wife cheating, or female does that and goes to court, a male goes and says, I caught my wife cheating, goes to court. The husband, the, the judge is where the three other witnesses. I don't have any other. You're accusing her, yes. 
false accusation. That's, that, that person is going to be lashed, the false accuser, even if he's right, but with the whip. Later, Allah revealed that there's a way to bring the accusation in court so you can avoid this circumstance. She won't be punished, he won't be punished, it just ends in divorce. But you see like all these things, it's really about stopping people from doing that which is wrong. When the society sees how severe it is, then they decide we're not going to partake in it. And then even the method by which a person is found guilty is very, very difficult. But you have to have laws and boundaries. Gotcha, man. So, isn't that even that the Prophet saw when when one of the I think a lady who had committed an act, and the Prophet was still like, did when they like go back? You know, I think she was expecting, mm. and so and then so even the Prophet wasn't like, all right, come back, make sure. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Giving excuses to not fulfill the punishment. So that's it's, it's interesting to bring up, bring up that point. Yeah. Because what precedes that incident in hadith is another man, Ma'iz, he comes out of the to the Prophet One of his friends says, go repent, ask the Prophet, so because you want, you want the I'm going to do both of oh, them now. Yeah, yeah. So Ma'iz is a male okay. who had actually committed zina. Okay. And he came to one of his friends, like, what do I do? Yeah. The friend said, go to the Prophet Muhammad right. When he comes to the Prophet Muhammad and he admits this, the Prophet turns away. Mm. So he admits that the Prophet turns away four times over. Now he's mm. born with four witnesses against you or four uh, times against yourself. I see. He still doesn't punish him. What does he say? He says, is he, is he crazy? Yeah. He said, no, there's no known record of him being crazy. Is he drunk? There's no sign of alcohol on him. Yeah. So the Prophet ﷺ was trying to excuse him. Wow. Now what's interesting about Ma is radiallahu anhu is eventually he is punished by stoning. Now when this happens, I, I don't think he expected it because he actually began to run away. So they actually caught up to him and they carried out the punishment. Mm. They came back and told the Prophet about this. His response was, why did you catch up to him? If he ran away, that means he didn't want this. You should just let him go. He would have just repented to Allah, Allah would have forgiven him. So even when carrying out the act, he said, you should just let it go. A short while later, another woman comes, Imra'atul Ghamidiyah. She comes to the Prophet radiallahu anha. A messenger of Allah, I committed this act and uh, and so she said, don't do to me what you did to Ma'iz. Like, give me an excuse to turn away. I'm expecting. So she's like, look, this, this, my own body is going to bear witness against me. I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet wasallam, now that he knows she's expecting, doesn't do anything. He tells her to leave. He, he, he entrusts her to one of the companions, to that, that family. Take care of her until the child is born. The child is born. Now this is months past. Yeah. She can just rethink the whole situation. Never asks about her. Uh, mean like never ask, like make sure she comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She comes back yes. on her own with the baby. The Prophet said, no, nah, that's not the time because this baby needs you. You have to wean the child first. <laughs> two full years is what it takes. So two full years. She can rethink the whole time, the whole process at that time. Now he comes back, she comes back to the Prophet the narration mentioned she's holding his hand. He's walking, the child is eating bread on its own. She's showing him, oh, Messenger of Allah, he doesn't need me anymore. Of course, he still needs the mother, but she's showing that, look, this child right now is independent enough to live with others. So then the Prophet sent him against what his heart wants, but this is, this is the law now, and she's pushing for this, entrusts this child to be taken care of by a family, and then carries out the punishment. He just didn't want it. Like, not just one year, multiple years passed. So, uh, when you see these incidents within Islamic history now, when the Islamic government was operating properly according to Islamic law, very few incidents like this took place. Especially very, you didn't find people being found guilty in court. And then if you live in a country where there are like a of laws, you need to follow the laws. Oh, absolutely. So you can't be like, well, I want to do this, I have four witnesses, or any, any, anything, you have to follow the law of the land. Yeah, in fact, let's look at it two ways. A lot of these people say, well, look what's happening in your Muslim countries. I'm, this is nothing against countries that are trying to be Muslim. The majority of the Muslim countries in the world do not follow Islamic law as it's meant to be followed. Mm -hmm. It might just be political circumstance, etc. Give them the benefit of the doubt, but they don't. So if someone sees, oh, in this country, they did this to a person and shot this person and did this, they're not following that law Islamically. There's a lot of cultural implications and other things and political implications. If you live in America, you can't say, oh, you committed this. Now I'm going to go and do this to you. You have to follow the law of the land. The law of the land does not allow any of this. Right. And so when people talk about honor killings, yeah. we'll take it upon ourselves to go do it. Yeah. Haram, 100% yeah. impermissible. You cannot do it. Gotcha. Yeah. So any, any, anything like, hey, still, still, I don't eye for eye. How about, no, Jazakul Khair. That's considered murder, by the way. If yeah. one of these girls are honor killed, yeah. 
that girl was murdered, that honor killer, he has to be executed. I mean, it's just one of those things that people have yeah, to, protect, right? I mean. Like that, so.